Hey everyone, happy day four of distance learning. We're getting through this nicely. Keep up the good work. Today we're gonna to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. So I know these are things that we've talked about before, but it's always good to review, refresh, make sure that we're staying on top of skills that we know and we're staying uh, up to par with those. So for parallel lines, first we wanna define it and we define parallel lines as lines that never intersect. And so by that definition, they are lines that have the same slope. So two lines, two equations that have the same m. So when we talk about graphing equations, we're always talking in that y equals mx plus b. That's our slope-intercept form. And so when we look at two equations that we would have, we could have y equals 2x plus 1. Well, in order to have a parallel line with that, we would want to have y equals 2x plus maybe uh, 6 maybe it's minus seven, um, whatever you want that equation to be, as long as it has the same slope, those two lines will be parallel. So if you take a look at our example here on our graph, you see these two purple lines that I've drawn would be parallel lines. They both have a negative one for their slope, up one over one each time. However, they have different y-intercepts. So that last part of the equation is always different, but their slope, is always the same. Now for perpendicular equations, now for perpendicular equations, we say that these lines intersect, but they don't just intersect in any way. They intersect at 90 degree angles. Now when we talked about parallel lines, we said they have the same slope, However, for perpendicular lines, they have the negative reciprocal of those slopes. It's the negative reciprocal slopes. Now, to give you a couple of example equations, we could say, again, we have that uh, y equals um, 2x plus 1. And to have the negative reciprocal means that we're going to take and change the sign on this 2x. So now we would have a negative for our slope. And to get the reciprocal of a number, if we're talking about a whole number like 2, we can imagine that this is being divided by 1 because every number divided by 1 is itself. So if we think of this as divided by 1, the reciprocal is just flipping this fraction. So taking the top to the bottom, the bottom to the top. So instead of 2, we now have a negative 1 half. And we can make this x uh, minus 7 even. Now you can see here I have a graph that shows a couple of examples of what that would look like on a graph. So in green here, you can see those perpendicular lines coming through and meeting at 90 degree angles. Now, when we talk about parallel and perpendicular, we have a couple of special cases when we talk linear equations. So we should talk about them as their special cases when we have parallel and perpendicular lines for them as well. If I have an undefined slope, Let's just say we have an equation that's x equals 3, because undefined means that I have the same x for every number throughout that graph. So x is always equal to 3. What happens if I want to try and get a parallel equation for my undefined slope? Well, if I want it to be parallel, that means that it has to be running in the same direction. So if we look at our graph here of our undefined slope, we have a straight up and down line. In other words, to be parallel to it or to never intersect, we have to have another equation that's going to be straight up and down, a vertical line. 
So what we have to do is think of an equation that would also be x equals. We need another undefined slope. So we could have x equals negative 1. doesn't really matter what number we pick. It would matter if we were given a pair of points, though. That pair of points would tell me where on the graph this line is going to be. But let's just say that we wanted it to be at x equals negative 1. So that would be a parallel line. But now what happens when instead of parallel, we say we want perpendicular? If I want a perpendicular line, we said that means that it needs to meet at a 90 degree angle. Well, if the slope is undefined, that means that we have something of our slope looking like m equals a number, doesn't matter what it is, divided by zero. Well, to change that, we would need to say that we have our slope now needs to be flipped and change the sign. So I would take this as 0 over 10, and I can put a negative up there. But as you all know, 0 divided by anything will just give me 0. And there is no such thing as negative 0. 0 is the one of the only numbers we talk about that does not have a positive or a negative. It's just 0. So if I were to graph this, we could pick really any line here uh, that would have a zero slope. So let's just go with um, y equals 3. And you can think of this as the opposite, because when we think of our graphs, we have our x-axis, that's our undefined equations, and then we have our y-axis, which is our zero equations. And so you can think the opposite of x is y on a graph. And so there we have our examples of both a parallel and perpendicular for undefined. For a zero graph, though, that we said would be a y equals equation. So let's say we have y equals negative 2. Now, I want something to be parallel to that. If you look at it here on the graph, we said the zero is a horizontal. That's why z and zero, it has zero slope, so it is horizontal. It's a y equation. So y is always, always going to be negative 2, no matter what x is. Now, if I want something parallel to this, that means I need something with the same slope. In other words, I'm still going to have a y equation. And for this case, it doesn't matter what equation we make up. Um, if we were given a pair of points, we would have to make a line through that point. So say that we were given the point 3 or 2, 3 over here. Then we would have our equation that comes through this line would need to be straight through. And we would see that this is up 3 on the y-axis, so our equation is y equals 3. Now the other option is to have a perpendicular line and perpendicular means that it's 90 degree angle intersect and as we talked about with the undefined slope when we think perpendicular we want to flip and change our slope so instead of having a 0 over 5 we would need to flip that so our slope would now be negative 5 over 0 now, it doesn't really matter what number is on top of this here slope fraction. As long as a 0 is on the bottom, my slope is always going to be undefined. So if my slope is undefined, that means that my equation, or the graph for this equation, would be going straight up and down. It's going to make that vertical line again. And so if I wanted to say that I have a vertical line that comes through the point for negative 1, we could come through here, and we would draw it straight up and straight down. And we would see, well, if this is a vertical line, that means that it's telling us x is always equal to a certain number. So our perpendicular line, we would say x is equal to 4. So there's a couple of different cases that we can see parallel and perpendicular lines. Let's take a practice now at uh, being able to write a parallel equation if we're given a point and a linear equation. 
So practicing some of these equations, the first thing we want to do is keep in mind what our parallel equations slopes are always going to be. Well, if they're parallel, they have the same slopes. The slopes are always the same. And if we have perpendicular equations, they have the negative reciprocal slope. So I'm going to do examples one and four on this page. If you want to practice and get a little bit of um, extra practice in before you start our assignment for today, I will be uploading the key page to both examples three and two so that you can see those and make sure that you've done those right as well. But first, let's look at example one. So first, we want to write the equation of the line that passes through the point negative 2, 7 and is parallel to the line y equals negative 4x plus 1. Well, the nice thing about being given the equation for these lines is that I already know what the slope is going to have to be. When we talked about parallel, we said we want the slopes to be the same. So our slope needs to be negative 4. It has to be the same that it was in the first equation. But now we want to write an equation using the point negative 2, 7. So for right now, I have my y equals mx plus b, and we know that m is going to be negative 4. So we have y equals negative 4x plus b. To figure out what b, or our y-intercept, is going to be, all we have to do is plug in our x and our y and solve for b. So we plug in negative 2 for x, and 7 for y. We've said the first thing we need to do in order to get b by itself is multiply negative 4 and negative 2 together. When I multiply two negatives, it becomes positive, and 4 times 2 is 8. So we have 8 plus b, and we still have 7 on the left-hand side. To get b all by itself, I need to get rid of this 8 over here and move it to the other side. And I do that by taking the opposite, in other words, the negative of 8, and moving it over to the left. Now, 7 minus 8 would give me negative 1, and b on the right-hand side. So I've solved for b, but that's not my final answer, because I want to write the equation of the line that passes through the point and is parallel. So my final answer is y equals negative 4x minus 1, taking and plugging this back into the equation I started with on the top. This would be my final answer. That's my equation that I would need to have to be parallel and passing through the point negative 2, 7. Now let's practice perpendicular as well as another skill. So first, reading the Question, we want to write the equation again of a line that passes through the point negative 5, 1 and is perpendicular to the line 5x plus 3y equals negative 21. Now the trick with this one though is that it's not already in y equals mx plus b form, so we don't know what the slope is just yet. So the first thing we need to do is get this equation to be in y equals mx plus b. So off to the side here, I'm going to write out the equation. 5x plus 3y equals negative 21. And I want to get y all by itself. Well, first thing I need to do is I need to move anything that's not a y, which means I need to move this 5x. To move 5x, that means that I need to subtract 5x. And what I do to the left side, I have to do to the right side. So we have 3y equals negative 5x minus 21. But I don't want three y's, I want just one y. So I need to divide both sides by three. Now when we talk about division, we talked about how I take three and divide it by each part on that side of the equation. Just like when we talked about distributing a multiplication, we would have to distribute this division to both things. So we'll have y equals a negative 5 over 3x minus... 21 divided by 3 will give me 7. Now this is just our equation that we need in order to write a perpendicular line. 
So I would notice from this that my slope here is negative 5 thirds. And I need to change that because in order to be perpendicular, we said that they have to have the negative reciprocal slopes. So instead of having a negative number now, this would become positive. And if I flip bottom with top, that means I'm moving 3 to the top and 5 to the bottom. So now my slope is a positive 3 fifths. So I would write out my new equation, y equals 3 fifths x plus b, because I don't know what b is yet. I need to solve for that by using the point negative 5 as my x and 1 as my y. So I'm going to plug both of those numbers in. 1 equals 3 fifths times negative 5 plus b. Now, again, I want b all by itself. So what I have to do is I first have to multiply. There's a couple ways you can think of this. You can notice there's a 5 on the bottom, and this would be a 5 on top. Remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply tops and bottoms together. But since I have a 5 on both the bottom and top, they would cancel each other out. I can simplify that right away, or you can just multiply the tops and bottom together. So if I multiply those two together, I get a negative 5 times 3 to get a negative 15. 5 times 1 would give me 5, plus b. But I know how many times 5 goes into 15. We just said 5 times 3 was 15. So 1 equals negative 3 plus b. Now I still want b by itself, and in order to do that, I have to move this negative 3. To move a negative, I need to add its positive. And what I do to the right side, I have to do the left side. So now I have 1 and 3 together to give me 4 for b. Now, again, I've just found what the intercept is going to be for the y-axis. I still need to take this and plug it in to the equation that I started with. So now I have my final answer of y equals 3 fifths x plus oops, 4. And that is my final equation. Now, again, I'm going to be posting the key for these other two problems here. So if you want to give those a try before starting our assignment for today, you may do that. Once you have finished all of the problems and practice that you would like to do for the day, you can go ahead and get started with your Delta Math assignment. Remember that you can always come and ask me questions or send me a message if you need more help with anything.